let's uh, slide on into other new, newly built, newly constructed products. <laughs> it's like the world of whiskey is a construction zone now. It's very weird. Moving uh, pretty much due north, which is something we never say in whiskey. Moving yeah, especially from, from New Jersey, right? <laughs> right, right. We that's gonna sound weird in the edit. Like we we started in New Jersey and we went northwards, but we went to about the only place that makes sense north of New Jersey, and that is to Whistlepig. Now Whistlepig has a really interesting new product out. Really, uh, something I don't think I expected to see this soon, but Piggyback is uh, now featuring. A bourbon in the lineup you know whistle pig's always been known for rye but we see a bot no it's not bottled and bond but it's 100 proof mm -hmm. six-year bourbon which super just kind of came out of left field for me yeah i mean we tried out the beyond bonded series and that featured a four-year bourbon and at that age it was certainly something that we were interested to see where it went from there at four years it wasn't quite there for me it was just drinking a little bit too youthful. So I'm excited to see the progression of that and what adding a couple of years to it. Cause I mean, we're talking about roughly the same product. I don't know if it's the same mash bill or not. Uh, it was a little bit hard to get a straight answer on that. So we, when I spoke to Whistlepig about this, they said that it was a very high corn mash bill and I asked them to specify what that was. And the only answer that I got was it is 90% corn. And there is rye in it as well. So I don't know if it's just corn and rye, if there's any malted barley in there. We have no idea, but it's at least 90% corn. So we could expect this to be a sweet one. Oh, whistle pig. Never change. Oh, whistle pig. <laughs> just keep doing pig things, man. Bless your heart. I am looking at the back of this bottle and there's some interesting information here. So they, um, first off, you see 100% on the back of the label and you think, oh, that's interesting because it's a 50% ABV spirit. But they say in tiny letters that it's the perfect partner to piggybacks 100% rye. Now remind you, this is bourbon, so it's not a rye. Um, the little table, there's a little table on the back that I thought might house some really interesting information. You know, kind of the stuff that we were talking about, the stuff I want more of. Uh, they say it's 100 proof, it is sweet, it is small batch, uh, number three char, bold flavor, and new American oak barrels, which we knew from the bourbon designation. So it sounds like uh, the table's 50% there. The rest is kind of just throwing darts at a dartboard of bourbon words. But okay. I think that's enough of a cryptic lead up to just say, I'm excited to give this a go. This is my first taste coming in uh, super blind and hot, ready to give it a go. Let's see what Whistle Pig, you know, I kind of, I hope that this is good and they'll just phase out that Beyond Bonded, Bottled and Beyond. I, I do this every time. Beyond bonded, yeah, you had it. Beyond bonded. Um, yeah, so this is a noticeable step up from the beyond bonded. Oh man, um, it is still got like that really sweet, like rich cornbread sort of backing to it. Um, a much better mouthfeel, noticeable better color in this one as well. Actually, uh, take a, a peek there. It's got a great color to it. It knows pretty well too uh it actually it's got a pretty good amount of oak influence on it too for being just six years and aging in vermont this is wild <laughs> i would not uh i would not guess that this is whistle pig whatsoever especially Maybe. if i tasted this blind and especially after tasting that beyond bonded because this i, I don't want to say it's remarkable whiskey like it is very nice like i'm i'm pleased and surprised at how much this very first sip like sat well with me but like this is a monster upgrade over that Beyond Bonnet. This is this is good bourbon. It is. It's got a lot going on. It is oaky too. Like, oh my it's, God. Yeah, it's oaky. It's got this really cool like caramel cone kind of, man, there's almost a fruitiness to it too. There's more going on here. I think I still have some of the Beyond Bonnet here. Let me, I'm going to pour just a little touch of that next to it and just do a quick comparison. Okay. I'm going to stick with this because I didn't... Uh... I didn't enjoy the Beyond Bounded as much as I'm enjoying this, so I'm going to stay with the good thing. But this has tons of char and apple pie, and there's like a custard and a, a burnt caramel, like a burnt sugar you get on the top of creme brulee. Like, this has a lot of character, and the proof is... The proof here works so much better than the same ABV for a much younger whiskey in that four-year Beyond Bounded. This is 
Um, I forget the price point, but like I actually am enjoying bucks. this, and that's huh, fifty bucks, six years, hundred proof, fifty dollar SRP. Okay, I mean that's a pretty good deal all day long. Yeah, I mean for something that's age stated, and you know made all right there in house, and and they're like totally off the grid. You know they're growing their own grain, growing their own oak. Right. They're really doing damn near as much grain to glass as you can get, which I think is cool. And on top of that. They, I mean, geez, everything that I think I asked for when we were tasting the Beyond Bonded came true with this right. <laughs> piggyback. If yeah, only I, mean, just, I had known that this was just a couple days behind it in the mail, um, this yeah. is checking a lot of boxes. Man, the, the comparison between these two is night and day, whereas there's a lot of like bright green youth grainy notes in the Beyond Bonded. The it, It's like it was totally wiped clean. Like okay. that's that slate is just gone and we're just starting out with a whole different product like these two they're, they're not even reminiscent of each other oh fascinating i i'm curious i i wish so badly we knew the mash bill because i also feel like the mash bill is different on this one there's got to be some malted barley or something else like it has this richness to it. it has a nice texture oiliness viscosity like on the palate it's rich where the previous was just like thin and, and hot and unseemly this is I mean, night and day is what you said, and I totally agree. Yeah, it does. It's got a really great, like, boozy child oak kind of background to it. It yeah. works well. It is, like, vibrant, too. This is begging for an old-fashioned. And I don't mean that in the, like, uh, 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 put it in an old-fashioned way. You get rid of stuff you don't like. like. This has that nice char to it. I think would go well with some maple and bitters and a slice of cherry. I mean... Yeah, I'm I'm a Midwesterner. My old fashions look a little weird, anyways. But a little bit of sweet, big bitters, a little bit of fruit. Like this would this would be very formidable in a good cocktail. It would, and really, that's what the whole piggyback line is catered toward. I mean, this is the one that is supposed to be right there for mixing. I mean, they keep the SRP as low as they can on these, and it's really sort of be like aimed to be like the bartender's best friend. This is the one that. I mean, when they sent us this, they also sent a bottle of their maple syrup with it, the barrel aged maple syrup. Oh, right. And that is like sort of the like, hey, use this, make a cocktail with the piggyback rye, make a cocktail with the piggyback bourbon, use this maple syrup with it. Like they're very intentionally put together. And I think that's great. It's a really good, a much better look than some of the other stuff that I think a couple of years ago we were seeing from Whistle Pig. And I'm excited about what this could mean for the future of their own distillate and their whiskey. Definitely. So we have the holiday season coming up, right? And you said the six years, 50% ABV, 50 bucks. Uh, you need a whiskey gift. You buying it? You passing? What, what's the consensus here real quick? Yeah, th this would be a great, great holiday gift, especially like if you live in an area where you get local maple syrup, but with it, get some cocktail cherries, build like a little old fashioned kit or something and give that to somebody, you're going to knock it out of the park. I love that. I think this is a good year for everyone to get an old fashioned kit. I've had some bad old fashioned at family family gatherings. And I think it's oh, time yeah. we just we just whip it up right. I'm with you, man. Totally ex like very excited about where this is going. I, I don't know if they have any plan to rest this stuff further and see where it goes. I would love to try some of this at eight years too. I, I hope so. I, I mean it, I'm going to make a huge assumption here, which is that this is the exact same whiskey as the four year beyond bonded. That's probably very faulty, but I mean the difference between four year to six year, let's, let's just say it even more general. The difference between their four year product and their six year product is remarkable. I can't wait to hopefully taste an eight, a 10 and a 12 year product, which we know they're doing with their rye. So there is some precedent, you know, there's some precedent there and I would love to, uh, see it again because i mean a 12 year bourbon from them i think could just be a flavor monster and hopefully it won't be priced like a million dollars it could be but uh you know for six years and 50 bucks if we keep that up i would pay 120 dollars for a 12 year bourbon from them all day long i would most certainly like to try that out yeah i'm with you man it'll be well or 12 but we'll call it whistle 12 oh okay we should start working and for their marketing team <laughs> I was saying that's exactly why I don't work in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am trying to send it like, yep, that's a good idea. Let's print that one. Oh, uh, everyone needs a fluffer, but okay, cool. So uh, yeah, so piggyback bourbon, six years, 50 bucks. Honestly, 
super good. We would love to know, guys, if you pick this up, if you tried it at a bar, uh, what your thoughts are. It's always interesting to see people, uh, you know, who we know for making rye venture into bourbon. It's more exciting when we see them do well. And that's where I'm going to leave it.